Good afternoon from the Gambia. My name is Gary Tijalo. Um, I'm a session host for this talk. The talk is going to be on boundaries, places, and future of targeting in awesome. Um, the session will be with Sarah Hoffman. The session will be 20 minutes with caption and answers. Thank you. Welcome to this talk, Boundary Places in the Future of Tagging. My name is Sarah Hoffman, and if this talk sounds familiar, you're not completely wrong, because this talk is a continuation of a talk I held in Myland in 2018 called Addressing Addresses. Why are addresses interesting? I'm the maintainer of Nominatem, Geocoder, which, if you have never heard of it, you've likely at least used it, because it's a software that powers the main on the main side, the search box. Search box, that means you type some text in there and expect us to find the right place in OpenStreetMap. And addressing a place, there are two forms to do this. The first one are postal addresses. So this is the stuff you write on a letter if you're still writing letters. Postal addresses are really nice. People generally know them, they're nicely structured. So you have house number, street, city, and maybe a state. And also in terms of OSM, this is essentially solved. You have address tags, you can extract them from the database and build a geocoding database. The problem here is that most places in OSM don't really have an address. Take Lake Geneva, it's far too big to have a house number. And in these cases, you need a kind of a location description to find your places. And the location description generally consists of the place, of the name of the place, and the names of places surrounding it, which describe where in the world it is. Essentially, this is what it means to build a geocoding database. So you collect all the places you want to find, and then for each of these places, you find the places which might describe where exactly it's located. This gives you search. And then to display the places, you also have these places, uh, you need to classify these places. Give them address terms. Say, okay, this is the city it's in, the county, the state. So you finally get a hierarchy which is useful for displaying. In the talk in Milano, I talked more about which OSM objects to use and what are the problems with them. To summarize, the best uh, objects to use are administrative boundaries and place nodes. Boundaries are nice because they're well-defined areas. So you can exactly say a place is inside the area or outside. Also, normally they have complete coverage, so there are no holes. If you have one administrative level, there are no holes in there. And you get the hierarchy I was talking about because we have the admin levels. The problem here is the admin levels are just numbers. So we don't really have a meaning there for the address like city or county. Place nodes, on the other hand, have this meaningful uh, name. You have a place city, a place county, a place village. That's nice. The problem with place nodes is that they only describe center. So we have a point and it's hard to say if, a, uh, if another point is really belongs to this place or not. And this also means we can't really create a hierarchy from this, because if you have two places, it's also hard to say one is inside the other or not. So at Milano, this was more a theoretical uh, musing of what is possible. In the last year, I have re-implemented the address assignment algorithm in Nominatim to really put this into practice. And this is what I want to talk about here today. I want to show you a, a couple of global patterns that uh, showed up when doing this and a couple of problematic cases. And then from there, go to the actual algorithm and in the end, muse a little bit more about what the growing of the OSM database means for the data users like Nominatum. Let's start with the global patterns. Admin levels and place nodes are a little bit messy in the OSM database, but that's because reality is messy. And often when I talk to uh, local mappers, they say, oh, our country is special. But if you look at it, uh, at this in detail, you see some global patterns emerge. The first global pattern is urban versus rural, rural structures. So every country has big cities where the administrative structure is more like you have cities, you have suburbs in the cities, neighborhoods, and maybe city blocks. And then there's the countryside, and there the structure goes from the country, county to towns, villages, and maybe isolated dwellings and farms. And every government has to somehow structure its administration around this. And what you find is there are three um, strategies to do this. 
The first one is you just jump admin levels. So we're in the rural setting, you have a structure of state, county, town, and then parts of town, town districts. When you come to bigger cities, they simply jump a level and say, okay, we only have a state, the city, and then the suburb, which corresponds to the town district. Or even if the city is really big, we jump the state and say, we just have cities and suburbs. This is easily put into OSM. You just map the boundaries that exist and skip the admin levels that don't exist. At the moment, the pattern is to use the lowest administrative level um, for such a construct. So the metropolis in our case would get an administrative level of four. Poland uh, went another way and they duplicated the uh, boundaries in such cases. Um, this was very well meant because it means that for every admin level, you really have to complete coverage and no holes in there. But in the end, for a data user, it means they have to deduplicate the boundaries and that's a little bit annoying. The second strategy is to simply use completely different hierarchies. So the government say, okay, in rural areas, we have states, counties, towns, while where we have a city, we talk about states, cities, suburbs, for example. And again, this is easily mapped in OSM. You just use the administrative structure your government uses and have at admin level six uh, counties and cities, for example. And what you can then do is use the place tag to distinguish the two. So either put place tag on the boundary and say, this is a county, this is a city, or um, use a place notice to distinguish this. We'll talk about this in a second. Finally, the third strategy of governments is to simply ignore the problem, ignore the traditional structures and do their own thing for the government. The example here I have is for uh, Russia, uh, in this case, Moscow. And here you can see the admin level four, which is the state of Moscow, consists of the city proper, the gray area, plus some countryside in the south. And then if you go to admin level five, you will see that already the parts are parts of the only cover parts of the city. So there's no administrative structure for all of Moscow. The Russian community has seen this problem and has decided to simply map place areas. So Moscow now is, an, is also a multi-polygon with uh, place equals city. And this is perfectly fine and nice. So we can put this in our administrative hierarchy between level four and five. It works perfectly well. This is the first one. The second global pattern I want to talk about are settlement mergers. Again, this is something that happens all over the world. Cities grow and they eat up the villages around them. Or villages decide to work together in admin for administrative purposes and go together, although they are separate villages. Um, for example, here I have the hometown, my hometown of Dresden. So you see the little red dot where Dresden originally started. And all the green dots used to be independent villages and were eaten up by Dresden over the centuries. And some of these villages, uh, former villages here, for example, the village of Seidnitz around here, you can see that it used to be a village. So there are houses which are clearly former farmhouses. You have a little village green and a church by. So this little part looks like a village. But the thing is, it's surrounded by lots of high rises and really in the middle of a densely populated area. So nobody would probably take this as a place uh, village, but it's a place suburb very clearly. It gets a little, a little bit more difficult if you go outside. So here, for example, a recent, uh, recently joined the village of Langebrück, which you can see is really in, looks like an independent village. It's surrounded by forests and uh, fields. It has a little village pond. It really looks and feels like a village. We've tagged it as place suburb at the moment, but tagging this as place village is really something where I can't argue you were wrong. It looks like a village. It feels like a village. So it should be tagged like a village, maybe. And you can also see if you go outside Dresden, where we are away from the big city, this is exactly what happens. So all the uh, purple dots you see here are tagged as villages, but none of them is really independent anymore. Some got eaten up by the towns around them. Some like Wachau and Seifersdorf just went together. 
to uh, found a municipality um, and belong together now. So the thing to learn here is you can't really uh, say something about the hierarchy or the independence of a place just from the place tag. And that's fine. So we have place villages which are independent. We have some which belong to other cities. So how the nominatum used this in the address computation? The first thing to um, learn here is that you can't really use the OSM administrative levels or place nodes as a base for the categories. You need your own. And that's what nominatum does. It defines categories, um, five between country and uh, street. And that's uh, about what is useful to, for display. So this is not to say that nominatum only collects five, a maximum of five places uh, to describe the address. It really collects everything around which might be useful, but it collects then a maximum of five to use for display. So what happens now? We collect all the places around and we give them a preliminary assignment in which category they fall. For boundaries, this is according to the administrative level and for places according to the name. What you see here is what works best for most of the countries, but there are exception, exceptions, especially in the assignment of administrative levels. And that's why Nominatum has the possibility to configure per country a different um, preliminary assignment. The next thing to do is connect place nodes and boundaries. We have a lot of uh, double tagging there, and I strongly encourage to do this because, as I just said, the administrative level and the place designation are two different kinds of information. Um, looking through the data, I find that what bet best works these days is the place node uh, looking at the wiki data tag. If there's the same on the place node and the boundary, then they obviously belong together. If this is uh, not there, then the next thing to look at is if the place node is in the relation of the boundary. Um, we only look at the role of label. There's also the role of admin center, but this is not necessarily the same object. Um, and finally, what is also possible, uh, I mentioned this, is to just put a place tag on a relation to give the designation of the boundary. Uh, this is a lot done in the US, for example. Once we have this, we start to shifting the category, our address categories for the boundaries. Um, and the special thing here to take care of is if you do the shifting according to the place designation, you still need to keep the hierarchy we have established via the administrative uh, levels. To give you an example, here we have uh, two villages. Uh, one is independent and has an admin level of eight. Uh, one is dependent and because of this has an admin level of nine and is in city, which has an administrative level of eight. If we would shift according to the place designation, both villages would, be, would go into the city level of the address. However, city level for the dependent village means it would be at the same level at, uh, as the boundary in which it is in. So we don't do this and just keep it at the original level, which is nine, which is suburb. And we have exactly what we wanted. This village is in terms of address and suburb and this one remains independent. This means now we have uh, established the categories uh, for the boundaries. Next thing to do is add independent place nodes. So all the place nodes which have not been matched up with boundaries now need to edit. And there's two steps here. First of all, there's a filtering. So the place nodes must be in the same administrative boundary as the place we want to describe. This uh, filters out a lot of boundaries uh, or place nodes, which are tend to be wrong. Then uh, we do the same thing as we did before and we do a downward shift. So if we find that a place node is in an administrative boundary, which is now at the same address category, then we just shift it one down. The example here is, uh, as it isn't done in London, we have uh, the city of London, which would be administrative level six. And then uh, you have a town uh, place node, which is in there. So it can't be because uh, city address level, because it's already there. So it becomes a suburb. 
And this so uh, solves both problems, our urban-rural divide, as well as the settlement mergers, uh, which mess up a little bit the place designations. The problem with this algorithm is that we really need to have a good boundary place matchup. Uh, it's still not working well in all countries. And the other thing is that we, in theory, we really need areas. If you only have nodes, we can't do much about the hierarchies. So what are the problematic cases? First of all, um, I've mentioned this before, the US is always a problematic case because it doesn't have a um, full coverage at the administrative level. So the county level is very well covered, but if you go further down to the cities, you only find administrative boundaries for the cities and the countryside is not covered at all. Um, for the postal services, uh, they have solved this in the US by um, defining something which they sometimes call postal cities. So the city responsible for delivering the uh, mail to the countryside, that's the city the countryside belongs to. But this is not mapped. We only have this at the addresses, so it's not easy to use for other features. The second uh, example I want to talk about is the UK, or rather about England. I haven't even looked at Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And the problem with England is that administrative boundaries are kind of useless. They are in constant flux. Every time you look, then the government has invented a new um, entity there. And the result is that people say, well, they basically don't care about it. So it's not useful for really uh, describing a location. Um, so I've looked, uh, there are other boundaries mapped in the UK. For example, if you have the county of Shropshire, you not only find the administrative boundary, but you also find ceremonial boundary mapped, which looks a little bit different, and the traditional boundary, which again looks different. And the odd thing is that this probably describes the situation very well. So the boundaries, where exactly the extents are, that's heavily contested. And the problem here is none of these boundaries are really uh, documented in the wiki, so it's not clear which one might be useful and which one might not. And uh, they're also not covered consistently all over England, so it's not really useful. I thought about just dropping all the boundaries and reverting to only using place nodes. But the problem here is that we run exactly into the settlement merger problem I mentioned. So London suburbs are mapped as towns and villages, which is the same as any countryside, and there's no way to distinguish them without using the boundaries. Another problem I've come recently aware of is China. If you've ever uh, wondered why there are so many names in China. That's not because there are so many big cities, but it's because the Chinese decided to assign the place types, not by what the places look like, but what administrative entity they are in. So they've invented the name of a rural city, which basically means all counties are tagged as a place equal city. And of course, this messes up the algorithm completely. They say that they do this because Chinese maps have the county names uh, displayed and they wanted this to have this on the OSM map again and also. So this is what this came about. It's probably possible to have an exception in the algorithm, but I'm not sure if I wanna, if this tagging for the renderer is really something we want to have in OpenStreetMap. So all this has uh, taken quite a bit of time uh, to do uh, longer than I expected. And in particular, what I found is the data has become complex and you really have to look very much into detail. It's not enough to just read the wiki and find out what's being mapped. You have to go through the data, uh, go to tag info, have to do statistics about what is being used, what is not being used. You have to do this per for every country. You have to read about the government structures in every country to understand what might work and what not. And this leads me to some observations about OSM data grow and what we should be careful about for to make OSM keep it useful for data users. Because we kind of have a paradox here that the more data data we have, 
Actually, this might lead to a loss of information for those who want to use the data. Let me explain this. First of all, what we have is a tendency to go from simple to complex objects. So, for example, what used to be mapped as a simple node for a camping site nowadays is an area with ways, with the campsites, with the toilets and everything mapped in detail. This is good, but the problem here is that we have very little support in the tooling for data users for this. The standard tools we have, they barely can do a complex tech evaluation. There's no support for evaluating multiple objects like the campsite here or split streets or something like this. And when it comes to relation, basically the only thing that is implemented is multi polygons. So before mapping complex objects, we really need to get the tooling up to date. Also, the meaning of the database of the OSM data changes. So when we started out, we kind of wanted to map the stuff which is relevant or which is useful to humans to get. And we are moving to a database which aims to be complete in terms of geographic information. Uh, the example of administrative boundaries, so when they were invented, basically the goal was we need those lines on the map which make the map recognizable for a human. They know the country boundaries and then they can find their places. And then we got government data that was imported and because it was all there, we imported everything. So now it's basically we have a complete reference of all areas defined by the governments. That means as a data user, I now have to go back and find out which boundaries are the ones I actually want to display on the map, which are the important ones which human likes. So this is a loss of information. Then there's the trap of the feedback loops. So we map more details, but often these details are framed in the context of existing text. And the simple reason is people want to see it on the map. And if you invent a new tag, it's not shown. Here the example of the highway footway, which used to be used only for independent footways. And then people started to think, oh, I want to map sidewalks as well. That's nice, it's more detail. But the problem here was that people just used highway footway because it was mapped. And then data users came and said, oh, wait, that's, that's horrible because we don't want to display this on the map or we don't, we need to know for routing if it's the same street or not. And as an afterthought, we added footway sidewalk as the second tag. But of course, the problem here is now data users have to um, evaluate the tag combination and also the use of footwalk equals sidewalk is very patchy. So people don't always take this. And this leads to a problem where data users basically need to build up their own meta database to interpret OSM data. So this can be done in routing rules or uh, mapping rules or what Nominatum is starting to do for uh, geocoding. You need to know which text to use. You need to know what are the regional defaults for the different texts. That's especially a problem with access text. And you need to know how tags are interpreted in every country. So for example, amenity cafe is not the same in uh, Germany or France. This is fine, but the problem here is that we have written it down nowhere. And that means every data user has to do their own research and build up the database. And in the worst case, this is a backdoor for closed sourcing OSM data. So if we go to a data set which is too complete, we might end up with a data set which cannot be used directly, but where people need to buy pre-processed data sets from a commercial uh, entities to actually use the OSM data. So what is my conclusion here? Um, we really need to talk about the implicit uh, assumptions we have in the OSM database and we need to write them down and make them accessible for people. This is not only for data users, but also for new mappers. I think in the long run, this will uh, help us with a lot of discussions we're having and misunderstandings and tagging. The second point is we should talk about standardizing complex mapping. It's not going to go away, the complex mapping of multiple objects. We don't need new, uh, new data types. We don't need to change the, the model. But if we can find ways of standardized processing of some of the data, 
it will be easier for data users to use the data. And my final point is that if you want to do micromapping as a mapper, um, you're welcome to do so, but always think about what was the simple case before and when you add the data, do you really add or you change the simple case? Just keep, make sure that the simple case is still usable. That's for me. Thank you very much. Um, if you're interested in Nominatim, the website is nominatim.org. Um, at this point, I also want to thank uh, the supporters. So in the last year, especially OpenCage, Graphhopper and Komoot um, have supported development of Nominatim, which really makes it possible to uh, do such a big project like the rewriting of addresses. And you'll see more of this uh, in the coming year. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The question, the first question is how should we handle boundaries changing, which seems to happen more than most would realize? How would we handle changes in the upstream data lines in when they change example out of copyright, copyrighted? Okay, so um, first boundaries changing. Well, that's that's part of life. I mean, if they're just moving around, you just move them around. The more difficult one is the mergers, um, which I mentioned. And this is actually one of these points where personally, I'd like to think often it would be good to leave the old boundaries basically as a place area in, in place. But it depends a little bit. Um, so if you have two villages merging, for example, then the villages used to be fairly well defined and it would be nice to keep the area of the village. Um, people sometimes do this, sometimes they leave them as old ones. Um, but yeah, I'd like to have this. Uh, it's always valuable information for us. And there was a second part, I think, about the licenses. Well, that's not my strong suit. But basically, well, if they get copyrighted, then it's nothing uh, that changes for you because you used the uh, not copyrighted data before. So that should be fine. Yeah, um, the second question, how does Nominatim get its feedback loop? That is, do you only hear from RSM gigs if the address information is bad or good? Other people may think differently. Um, yes, so mostly it goes to the Nominatim issue tracker. Um, so when people complain there, uh, the stuff I did here with uh, the addresses, I did a lot of research also with going to Wikipedia, looking at other sources, uh, how are official addresses um, formatted and so on. Um, we are also at the moment have a Google Summer of Code project where we are trying to build a feedback form. And there I hope to get a little bit more feedback also from other people just using uh, the search engine and then they can tell, oh, this is wrong and this part should be changed and so on. So I hope we get more uh, feedback there. Um, what are your thoughts on local drawings? Approximate boundaries of their suburb with place equals to suburb tax based on their own definition goes against the standard OSM rule of presence on the ground and can leave out places that might deserve to be consider part of certain suburb, but on the other hand, can lead to a much better view of hierarchy of places than just a place not place, place approximately in the center of suburb neighborhoods. Sorry, long one. <laughs> yes, so yeah, I'm a big fan of drawing place areas, but yeah, as the question already said, it is contested because you can't do it approximately, but basically if, even if they overlap a little bit, that would be fine if you say, okay, this area there, say they, some say belong to this and belong to this. I don't agree that it is against the on the ground rule because on the ground rule also means uh, if you ask all the people in the street and they tell you um, the same thing that they are in town B, B city or something, then basically that you can, you can verify this. But I know it's a, it's not something we do and it's, well, potential for conflict. Let's put it like this. Yeah. Um, do you think map rendering should move to a similar recasting of place classification as you described? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't think so. Um, 
I think it would be too complex. I mean, the the algorithm that uh, Nominatum is using it requires a lot of uh, pre-computation. So I'd rather see that maybe at some point we get to a mapping where it can be easier uh, inferred. But I'm not sure here. I have to say. Do you think data users could? or should play a role in harmonizing place taxonomy in LSM? Um, that's, okay, difficult question. So it's always important for, I mean, the, the especially we had just rendering and geocoding, of course, they need this, this data, but in the end, I think it's more important that the local mappers uh, agree on what they should do. So basically we need to kind of globally agree the general rules, how it should work. So the, the thing I was talking about um, that what you use in the place is what it looks like and not what the government tells you that it is supposed to be something like, something like this. And then I think it's more important that the mappers then locally say, okay, this is the classification we do. I think Portugal has recently had a year long discussion to do this and they have now written a wiki page and this was really nice. So this is something uh, also I can read and just put in as a data user. And like How do you handle enclaves where part of one country is inside another? That's uh, a simple thing to do. It's uh, you can just draw multi polygons and basically the enclave then just goes into the uh, other country. That's simple geometry. Administrative mergers don't mean that the villages are merging. For example, in Iceland, where the regional authorities are merging, but the towns are still in separate and are still in separate places in practice and name. Is there a guide how to map that so it makes sense to nominate him? So this um, this is exactly the settlement merging which uh, causes the problems. So what I would do here is, as I said, definitely use the place city as before. And if you say the, the merging um, entities don't have a real meaning anymore, then just uh, put them up in a higher administrative level and say, for example, in, in, in Germany, we use municipality. Um, and then you have basically saying municipality, well, that's kind of a village, but it's actually merged villages and we don't care much about them as we care about place villages. And if you do this consistently, then this is something that can be can be fixed. So using the place types can fix this government um, optimization uh, problem, basically. Um, do you see a way to start the nominatum search on osm.org in the middle of the currently selected map and then go outward from there? At the moment, most m at the moment, mostly places in other part of the world are found. Uh, it's it's doing this. Um, so generally, when you have a look at the map, uh, the the OSM website sends the the area you're currently looking at, and it does prefer a little bit the places which are there, but not a lot. And the reason is that it tends to give you a lot of errors if you have a strong bias on what you're looking at uh, because all the little poise restaurants and so on, they suddenly show up. And we have an issue open there to improve this a little bit. So to say, okay, the more important features which are in the current view um, can uh, should be shown uh, better. But yeah, this is basically still on to-do list. Okay. There are no other questions. Um, if you just want to say something. No, thanks. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone. If you still want to connect um, with the speaker, you can find her on the post tag chat room, and then they can, if you have more questions or feedback, um, you can continue there. Thank you for now. Bye.